I recently came across a saying and I was taken aback. It sums up everything. The saying goes like this. A narcissistic parent hates you more than they love their children. That's it. That is the essence of a narcissist counter parenting tactics. That's why they're so punitive, aggressive and unkind when co-parenting with you. That's why they sacrifice their children in the process of taking revenge on you. That's why they're so strict. They want control over everything. They want half of the custody when they're so neglectful and careless, when they hardly want to take care of your children in any way. When you are the only sane parent, the only parent who takes care of every single need of your child or your children, and that is there, the biological parent, a, the sp a sperm donor or the egg donor, if I can put it that way. Let's talk more about this in today's episode in depth and detail. And before we do, please make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, because your subscription helps in spreading awareness about narcissistic abuse. Hi, I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. Let's dive in deep and let's get started. Let me put it as it is. A narcissist is not interested in co-parenting with you at all. No, they aren't. Because what does this term mean? It simply means both parents are interested in nurturing their children properly so that the children can grow into healthy adults. Both parents are supposed to put their egos aside and just solely focus on, on the children. But what does the narcissist do? The narcissist who hurt you, the narcissist you are trying to co-parent with, solely focuses on making this journey of co-parenting a mess for you. A struggle that doesn't let you eat, that doesn't let you sleep, that keeps you thinking, that keeps you on toes, on as, uh, edge, ruminating all the time, wondering what is this person going to do next? How are they going to create an issue and what will be my approach to resolve that? This kind of extreme approach to co-parenting is basically nothing but a narcissist's desperate attempt at destroying you, at bringing you down. And, and you might wonder why. Where does this hatred come from? It comes from the fact that they couldn't control you. They couldn't turn you into a shell of yours. They couldn't take advantage of you completely. They couldn't extract all the fuel that you had to offer and leave you like a shell. They were not able to do that. They failed at doing so because you left. They couldn't fully parasitically insert themselves into the lives of the children that you freed from them by separating. That is where this hatred comes from. And this hatred of theirs takes over the love they have for their children. When I firmly believe that they do not love their children at all, and I have seven reasons to say why, to explain why. I have explained these reasons in depth and detail in another video, another episode, which you can watch right now by clicking the I button above. Back to the topic. So every inch they want, they don't want it out of love. They don't want 50% custody because they are truly interested in being with their children, spending time with their children. Of course not. They want that because by doing so, they know they will distress you a lot more. They will make sure to be present in your life even when they know how undesirable they are to you. That is what they target. And the sad thing is they sacrifice their children in the process of their revenge, of taking this revenge on you. They make their children suffer in the process of satisfying their ego. And this suffering leaves children so traumatized if nothing is done about it. What am I talking about here? What suffering? Let me give you a couple of examples and let me know in the comments if you resonate with these examples or not. One, not feeding them properly, not feeding them on time, starving them intentionally, keeping them hungry, knowing that these children are going through crucial developmental stages and they need proper nurturing, they need food, they need proper guidance, they need presence, they need a structure, they need to develop this biological clock through this structure. They, are, they just neglect all of that and just keep them hungry. There's so much uncertainty. And I can't tell you how many parents have cried in front of me, worried that their children are going to struggle because of the narcissist negligence. They are not being fed properly and we're not getting proper help 
from the court system. Because nobody cares about this or seems to care about this. The child is getting harmed and they're just left like that. In an extreme case, one of the clients that I have been working with shared that the narcissist fed their child pet food, dog food, and then said it was a mistake. They uh, mistook it for a uh, canned food or something like that. Is that even possible? The same person who is so calculated about calls and days and numbers, how could they mistake dog food for canned food? It's not possible given how calculated they are. What I can tell you is that this was a deliberate attempt at harming the other parent because they knew by doing so the child would be harmed and so will be the parent. The next example is not clothing them properly, keeping them in untidy clothes, unclean clothes, or even forcing them to sleep without clothes or be around without proper clothes so that the child is traumatized, feels unsafe, and shuts down. It's like they break the child's will. They make it bend before theirs so that the child becomes more compliant out of fear. They make the child freeze to make them more obedient so that they can say yes to every single demand the narcissist makes, every single command the narcissist gives them. All of this is evil and it comes out of their hatred. I always say they, they have no empathy at all. It's said they lack empathy, but I say they have no empathy at all. And by doing all of this, they make it quite evident. The third example, is enabling the child, putting them on the pedestal, having no routine whatsoever. The child can brush their teeth if they want to. If they don't, then there is no one to ask. There is no one to tell them to do so. They can do their homework or not do so. It really depends on the mood. And by doing so, they are creating this false comparison. I am the great parent. I am the Disney dad, Disney mom. I don't punish you. I'm not strict like your mom or dad. I I am the one who will let you do everything, do whatever you want to. I just don't have a problem. And then that brainwashes the child into thinking, you are really obs obsessed with controlling them. You are the bad parent who is adamant at controlling their life and so on. Basically, this is how parental alienation actually looks like. It, it's a trick that the child doesn't know about. Every person needs a structure in their life, be it a child or an adult, because that is how we move forward. We cannot do whatever we want to, but they program them to expect instant gratification. And that is what also fosters and nurtures narcissism. All of this truly makes it a battle that you have to constantly fight with the narcissist directly or indirectly by repairing the damage, by answering those questions, by holding space for the tantrums, by unfreezing your child, raising questions, taking them to the court and still nothing happens, back and forth, back and forth. It is so exhausting. If you are a parent who is continuously trying, regardless of what they are putting you through, what the narcissist is doing to you, I am proud of you. And saying that won't be enough because you are fighting the world's toughest battle. Parenting in itself is a very difficult thing to do and here you are parenting with a monster. Just trust yourself. Do not take the things they say about you personally. You are an excellent parent. Believe in your efforts. Do the right thing. Nurture your children the right way. Set proper examples and you will succeed. You will be able to repair the damage and you will be able to raise them into healthy adults. With that, let's bring this episode to an end. I truly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comments. I'll talk with you in the next one. Until then, let the healing begin and continue.